Welcome to the Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Reniker, Justin Charles, and Josh All. Hey, what's up, Browns fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Dogs Podcast. Josh and Justin with you guys tonight, and we're going to be breaking down the Browns upcoming week five matchup in Washington against the Commanders. We are doing another Dog Pack Discord live show here tonight, so as the audience continues to fill up, we're going to do our quick spiel, talk to you guys real quick about some of the things that we expect to see this week, or at least hope to see, because honestly, I don't really know what to expect anymore, but uh, we'll we'll kind of go through it all and everything. Um, just a little precursor here. I am sick, so if my voice is very blah and low, that's why. Um, so Justin may be taking over and doing a whole lot of the chit chat tonight, but we'll get these guys up here on stage and let you guys tell us what you guys think. So before I do, if you want to be a part of these dog pack discord episodes, head to join the dogs.com, become an official dog pack member on the Patreon page, sync up the page or uh, yeah, Patreon with the discord, the private discord, get in there. There's 24 seven conversations going on. It's a ton of fun, great group of diehard Browns fans. It's just an awesome place to be, especially like on game days when things aren't exactly going the way we had anticipated uh, before the season. It's a good place to be. Uh, it's a great place to commiserate uh, when the when the times call for it, unfortunately. But it's also a good place to celebrate, uh, which we're hoping we're doing this Sunday. So make sure you guys check that out. Join the dogs.com. Justin, why don't we just kind of break down real quick what we're expecting yeah. from this game? Um, well, actually, you know what? Let me back up. Before we do that, I do have a okay. voicemail from Kenny Mack. Let's let him kick it off. Yo, guys, it is Kenny Mack, and we are just boarding the plane. And if it sounds like it, yes, I am in a Vegas haze. But one thing about being in Vegas is I didn't really have to be in the reality of the team. I'm probably going to get back there soon enough. I'm still positive enough that they can do something. I mean, come on, it's been four games. They've got to have figured something out by now. There's got to be a lift because Chubb's back in the building. Najoko's got to be coming back at some time. This is a game of runs. Unfortunately, we've been running flat on our face. But if we can pick up or catch the ball, stop the sack, and we can get some good tackling, we've got a good shot to win any game. It's not like we don't have the tenor like we did many years ago. Go we'll figure it out. Let's get a dub. Let's go. Okay, so that kind of kicks off a little positivity. He's right. I mean, yeah, this Browns team is obviously good enough, talented enough, to win any game they go into. It's just a matter of, can they put it all together and do it? Absolutely. I think, uh, I think he said some like very, very valid points as far as like all the games minus probably, you could say the Dallas one was probably a little bit out of reach, but every other game was very much in reach as far as losses. Um, Giants game, we were right there. Vegas game, we were right there. If not for some, like you said, just untimely mistakes and, the crazy thing is we're not playing, in my opinion, I don't think we're playing great football right now, but it, we're there. You know what I mean? We're in games. So like he said, if we can come in and we can clean some things up, play well, I, for getting into this week, I, I, I know we'll get into your opinion on it too. I, I expect this to be a very big nail biter. Like I think this is going to be a back and forth kind of slug fest. I don't, I don't expect a, a ton of ton of defense, um, especially <laughs> you know from what we've seen. But um, yeah, so I mean we can we can go from there and just talk about both sides of the ball. But as far as like them offensively, they're uh, they're very fun to watch. Like uh, I've only got to see him a couple times. Jaden Daniels is this kid's special. Like he uh, he's phenomenal he's everything build and probably more um they had weapons we always joke during the offseason like you know chicago was a perfect perfect you know scenario to walk into for a quarterback and you don't usually get that i don't think his situation was far behind that either and we kind of talked about that in the offseason you know you got scary terry you know mclaurin and you got two really really talented running backs um, Zach Ertz is there now and you know he's just a veteran tight end who's you know he's reliable he's not gonna blow your socks off and be you know a Travis Kelsey but you're he's gonna give you five catches for 50 yards and maybe a tutty you know but um 
as far as like offensively heading into this week, Brian Robinson's kind of been on a tear. He's a terrific running back. He hasn't practiced yet this week. He's got a knee injury. Um, Austin Eckler was out the week before on uh, concussion protocol. He's back practicing fully. And uh, all of a sudden, there's this Jeremy McNichols guy who came out of nowhere last week and scored two touchdowns. Looks like he might have a similar role as far as being that two-headed monster, the second head of that running back committee. Um they're going to be tough to stop on offense. I think they're, you know, we're going to have to get a very, very good valiant effort from the defense. The stuff that we saw last week with ankle tackles and, you know, just kind of something like just the mental mistakes. I don't think you can do that in this game. I think that they will absolutely burn you if you make those mistakes. Um, Do I think we can contain them? Sure, absolutely. I think that our defense, if we can, it's the same defense as last year, obviously, but if we can just put some pressure on the quarterback and, you know, stop the run. Our, our biggest thing for years was we couldn't stop the run in the Joe Woods uh, defense. And I got flashbacks like PTSD of oh, that, man. you know, the last few weeks. So that's, for me, that's a concern because this is a, a group, especially if Brian Robinson plays, that can absolutely just gash you with the run. And then Jaden Daniels also is a scary run threat on his own. Absolutely. Um, just to kind of go along with your your take here about the Browns needing to be able to yeah. tackle somebody on on defense, your PTSD is well warranted. I found this stat today. The Browns are allowing 2.24 yards after contact per attempt. That is the worst of any defense in the NFL. So that means after we're hitting these guys, they're getting almost two and a half yards on average after they get hit against our defense that was so dominant yeah. last year. And yes, you know, you said it right. I mean, it's the same defense as last year, except they're not playing the same. I mean, you got Martin Emerson out there. looks nowhere close to what he looked like last year. He was pro bowl yeah. caliber player in this year, not even close. Uh, Denzel Ward, you know, has been good, but last week, not the best. And, you know, just the tackling up front has been, pathetic i mean even jok's out there missing tackles it's like guys what what do we got to do um i it's so it's so frustrating whenever you get these guys at the line or even behind the line and then they break a tackle and you know continue on to pick up big yardage against us it's very frustrating i well my thing too like i think fundamentally we can get back to basics you know what i mean like these are this is a very very skilled roster on that side of the ball like it's I, I still believe that, you know, there's a lot of talent. Um, we lost right, which is, I think, a, a pretty big loss. I think that's super tough. Yeah, maybe we should just uh, men- really felt- mention that real ahead, quick. Really, yeah. I, we haven't obviously talked anything on the pod. I didn't do a, a midweek update the other day, but this was just came out today. Alex Wright is going to have yeah. season ending surgery to fix a torn triceps that apparently yeah. he, he injured it during training camp. And then oh, it really? has, okay. and then it's just progressively gotten worse, uh, and t- it's hey. torn now. So he's got to have surgery. So the Browns lose their top backup uh, defensive end. I mean, unless you consider Oboe behind uh, Miles and Z, but I mean, Alex Wright was playing a pivotal role for us. Yeah, yep. I think that that's a tough loss. He felt like he was kind of finally coming into his own a little bit. Like there would be flashes of you know over the last couple seasons, but um. Yeah, I think just let's let's get back to basics. Let's clean up the tackling. Let's play up the mistakes. You're gonna have to pressure this kid, and then also like be disciplined, you know, because he's gonna be able to roll out if you can if you get pressure on him. That's not the end of it, you know. You also have to contain him because he can scramble out and easily pick up five to ten yards. Um, so I would say that, and the, as far as like Martin Emerson and stuff, like some of the coverage mistakes, like. I thought we got away from that. I thought we got away from the days where Grant Delp and, you know, Denzel are looking at each other and holding their, like holding their hands up, like what uh-huh. happened there? Um, I think that we can clean all that stuff up. And, and honestly, like this is, this is a, this is a tough task, you know, like if, if you need a get right game, uh, this, it wasn't this one. It was last week, you know, or the week before, <laughs> if you wanted to get things figured out. Right. I know a lot of people are saying, well, hey, this is kind of like the preseason for everybody. 
well then if if that's the case we should have played these guys in the preseason but right i mean you know preseason's over now like these guys count yeah i think that this is this is the time now like i we can't have any more excuses like it's time to just lock it down and if you know you have those aspirations in the locker room of what your goals are it's time to you're gonna have to absolutely show out yeah for sure so I'll just run through some stats real quick to kind of talk, you know, give everybody an idea of what we're looking at on Sunday. So uh, the commanders are currently on defense, giving up the sixth most yards per game, 357 yards. They average giving up 220 passing 137 rushing. So like you said, if there's a come correct game for the offense, this is the defense you want to do it against. It's one of the worst defenses in the league right now. They give up a ton of yardage. So this is the type of game where if we're going to, if we're going to make a big splash on offense, put up some yards, put up some points. Can we just get over 20 freaking points for once? This would yes. be the game to do it. Uh, they're, they're allowing 25 and a half points per game on average. So again, can we break that 20 mark for the first time this season? I did not think week five I would be saying that, but we still haven't done it. Uh, they On offense, they are also sixth most offensive yards per game on average at 382 so not only do they they give up yards on defense but man they can get the yards on offense so they average 170 rushing yards third most in the league we just let the Raiders who were the worst rushing team through the first three weeks run for 100 what they they matched their season total in one game against us last week so Mm -hmm. if we don't clean that up this commander's offense is going to run all over us because that's what the Raiders did. And we let them. So we have got to get that cleaned up. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree with you. I I do. And you kind of touched on it. This is, this is a great opportunity for the offense to kind of, I think you saw positivity out of the offense. I mean, in certain aspects, as far as I thought Deshaun Watson looked great, you know what I mean? And we've talked about that. Um, and, you know, if there's some things to build on, this is another game where you can, there's opportunity to go out there and ball out. Yeah. And we're going to need him to ball out. I mean, and we're going to need him to have a, like the the under 200 yards. That's not going to cut it, I don't think. The under 20 points, like the 18 points a game, that's not going to cut it this week. So I, I think this is a game where we we were joking and talking, but like this, this has shootout all over it for me like who makes who makes the big play at the end or who makes the big mistake at the end and you know I I see this being a very close game if we can keep it competitive as far as you know keep throwing punches back and forth at at each other but absolutely I think that this should be a really really nice game for the offense Um, and you know something for Deshaun's confidence I think you saw that the confidence is getting better you know the leadership is getting better uh, this could be another game to build on. Yeah, I mean, in the last time that the Browns went to Washington, played the Commanders, 2022 was after it was Deshaun's first year here, came back off the suspension. It was really his first, the, the game where like, hey, there's that guy that we traded for and we've been waiting for. Uh, I mean, he only completed nine of 18 for 169 yards, but he had three touchdowns. Two of them went to Amari Cooper, who had three catches for 105 yards. So, You know, it was that explosive second half, if I remember correctly. The first half was so-so, and then the second half, he just kind of went nuts. And so we'll see. We'll see if he can kind of recapture some of that. Because like you pointed out, we we talked about it Monday. He played really well in Vegas. It's just, it's a culmination of things right now. This offensive line, and we can talk about that real quick. I know Jed Wills, Jack Conklin were both practicing in a limited fashion. I think Dewan Jones as well. So all three of those tackles have at least been practicing this week, so they have a chance to suit up on Sunday. James Hudson, the last I saw, did not practice yesterday or today. So, right. you know, maybe we don't have to worry about him out there, but hopefully at least one or two of the other guys can be ready to go because this offensive line has been yeah. so bad. And we just got to – the receivers just have to do their part. Mari Cooper, obviously, just got to catch the ball. And – um yep. I know there's been a lot of talk about like David and Joku, and last I saw, I believe he did not practice today. You're correct. Okay. He, so, uh, I uh, we were texting earlier. I don't know if you saw, it, but the um, 
He did not practice, but it was almost like a planned rest day because he practiced Wednesday, mm-hmm. almost like a you know a cool down. Okay, after you know kind of ramping things up, I'd love to get him back. I know we talked about it, and you'll lose him as like an offensive weapon, but God, I think if we could get him just to block, just to <laughs> take on a, an extra blocker or anything, you know, I will, or even just like as far as just mojo, I think we need like some some leadership badly right now i think we need our guys to kind of step up and it's put up or shut up time and for me he's i think a big motivational leader on that team and i i we need him badly back oh for sure big news dog pack we are thrilled to announce we have a partnership now with bet stamp and sign up expert opening up an incredible opportunity for you to join some of our favorite sports books and get the best odds and new user offers this nfl season head over to our dedicated page at signupexpert.com slash dogs d-a-w-g-s to explore a whole selection of sports books tailored to your region each with unique offerings for you If you guys are ready to take your sports betting to the next level this NFL season, head over to signupexpert.com slash dogs, D-A-W-G-S, and check out the new user offers and the best odds on all the sports books. That's signupexpert.com slash dogs. Um, Does anybody want to come up on stage and give us your thoughts? Okay, we got Tony first up here, so let's bring him on. Tony, How's it going, Tony? How are we doing, guys? Great. Yo. Good, good, good. So I, I have, like I said, I'm going to bring positivity. I have a couple positive things that I, I think is going to be good is starting with the IR. I, I think uh, the biggest name that I saw in there was Michael Dunn. Um, yeah. The reason why I say that is I'm not saying that he's going to take Zinter's spot at guard, but it gives us some extra offensive line depth just in case, you know, either Teller or Zinter were to go down. So I think that was the biggest name I love seeing coming off the IR. Um, so that's positive number one, and we're getting people back. Um, positive number two is the way to kind of look at this upcoming week is seeing if Deshaun Watson plays like he did against the Raiders, which in my opinion, I think you guys both agree on it. If he plays like that every game, we should be in every single game the rest of the season, without a doubt. Um, which... I say is a great thing and is a positive thing because now you look at all the other problems and if you have a quarterback that can play, the other problems are easy to fix. It's easy. I shouldn't say it's easy to fix as the NFL, but in my opinion, it's easier to fix missed tackles compared to having a bad quarterback. It's easier to fix a broken off of the line than it is having a bad quarterback. No. So if Watson can keep this up, they can easily turn this around. Um, And then the third thing I wanted to bring up too, and you guys kind of talked about it last week, uh, with like the coaching decisions and things like that. I was listening to a podcast this past week with uh, Rodney McLeod. I think that's how you say his last name or whatever. Um, and they were asking the questions about the leadership of locker and things like that. And, and he said something that I think this team embodied last year. And if they could figure out how to embody it this year, they could be a winning team again, is that um, a good team is team with good coaches but a great team is a team with great players and the players are the ones on the field between the lines that can decide this and McLeod kind of said himself is Stefanski and the whole coaching staff are doing all they can it's up to the players to fix this and turn this around and I think him coming out on a podcast after losing against you know uh, Oakland losing against the Giants having the first bad game of the season against Dallas tells us a lot that the players I would hope are starting to see this as like, all right, we need to get our shit together and we need to start playing better. And, you know, after him going on the podcast this week, saying that, and then going into this week with the commanders, it gets me pretty excited. And I think a lot of positivity to see coming out of this game. No, I don't disagree. And what was uh, Jim Schwartz had a comment too? I think it was today and he's or it was yesterday or today. And it was something like, we shouldn't need to get kicked in the mouth to come to be ready to come play or something like that. And it kind of speaks to what you're saying. Like the coaching staff is probably doing what, whatever they can do. I just don't understand what, what is wrong with these guys? Like these, the, the players on the field, you just have not seen. I feel, I don't feel the drive and the passion and the energy out there. Like we saw last year. I mean, these guys were getting after it last year. They were having fun and I haven't felt that so far this year. What do you think, Justin? 
No, I, I agree, man. It's It sucks because for four weeks now, I've kind of like been banging on the table going, where where's the energy? Where We come out flat. Our biggest thing last year is I felt like at home, you couldn't, that team would have ran through a wall. And then this year, you, but, you know, on the road, it was kind of, uh, you know, it looked a little flat. This year, I'm like, Jesus, we just look flat. We just look like we're just, there's no energy. So I agree with that. I, I think that's, that takes a lot of, you know, that's a, a big leadership move for him to come and say that, you know what I mean? Because there's probably guys in that locker room that need to have that conversation and, you know, you know, look in the mirror and say, hey, you know, like, my play hasn't been great. Hasn't been up to par. Um, as far as Michael Dunn, I'm yeah. a big fan of Michael Dunn. Michael Dunn, I always remember just seems like in that group of guys when COVID was all going on and they're bringing up guys out of nowhere. They were working out parking decks and stuff like that. He's been nice for us for for years. It's just a depth piece, you know. Like you don't you don't ever want to be like, hey, we have to start Michael Dunn, you know, all pro. <laughs> but like, it's nice to have a guy that you can slide in. You're right, especially Zinter struggled. I, you know, for a guy that we were very excited about, and I'm not saying he's a bust or anything like that, but I, like obviously not ready to to be in the spotlight like that and. So if, if this takes some pressure, because we're going to tell her's out for at least three more games and right. it might be longer than that, depending on how, you know, the knee heals and all that. So uh, I'm okay with Dunn. You know, we've seen him play. Is it perfect? No, but can we rely on him for the most part? Yes. Um, and then Watson, I, I agree with everything you said, Tony. I'm, I'm, that was the first time since last year where I was like, okay, like, He's he's firing it off. There's definitely chemistry with Judy. That looks good. We're 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 uh, ticky tacky hold and a drop pass away from. I don't want to say dominating that game, but we were we would have that touchdown the came back. Yeah. I don't know if they would have been able to come down and score again. Maybe they could have, but no, I felt no. like man, that was such a momentum change. And just as soon as you got excited about the opportunity, they like oh hey, we might have just got lucky and came out of here with a W, you know, we're watching flags come flying out. So I, um, it's tough. Don't get me wrong. Like anytime you start a season where you think, we know, we should run it back to the playoffs and let's do this thing. And we start one and three, it's extremely tough, but you know, I, for me, there's hope. There is hope. For sure. And I mean, you know, the, the called back touchdown, then who knows on the drive when Amari Cooper tossed up the, wide open pass for an interception. Who knows how that drive would have ended? Right. You're right. We might have double score beat them on the road in Vegas. And then the conversation this week would be a little bit different two and two on a, you know, coming off a big win out in Vegas rather than the loss. So it sucks. Um, we, we need to stack wins and starting out one and three does. It's just not a great start, but obviously there's still plenty of time to bounce back. It starts Sunday. We got to get a win. We have yeah. got to come back with a win in Washington. Um, one piece of good news I did want to mention, um, I was going to do at the top of the show and then I just kind of forgot, but Mike Hall Jr. Looks like he's coming back yeah. soon. So they uh, announced That's the other day that he is going to be suspended. He's eligible to come off the exempt list on Monday. He they issued The NFL issued him a five-game suspension for violating the personal conduct policy, but the games that he spent on the exempt list do count toward the suspension. So... He's already missed four games on the exempt list, which means the suspension is really only one game more after this. So he's eligible to return and play in week six against the Eagles. Yep. That's huge. That's huge. You know, we were, I, me personally, I was starting to think like, how long is this going to go on for? Are we going to even see this guy this year? Yeah, I know. You know we I, talked about that. I didn't know. I felt like it got very quiet on the news end um, as far as what was going on. But yeah. I'm, I'm ex- I we were excited going into the season, you know, before all of the stuff happened with him, and uh, I think it'd be a nice boost to the defense, you know. We like, need it. Yeah. Shelby Harris is, you know, hasn't been, hasn't been, you know, and I guess we, I don't want to dog on it too much, you know what I mean? But it, like, I think there was higher expectations for that entire defensive line, you know, and so far, for me, I'm like, hey, Miles. Eight miles this year, you know, and then after that, I'm like, 
there's some times where I don't even know if Zedarius is out there. There, you know, I like Dalvin, but there's times where Dalvin kind of disappears into the game, you know. Yeah. So if it's a boost of energy on that side of the ball and on that line, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Peter makes a good good point here in the chat. He says, I think it's important to remember we won a lot of games last year on a call that went our way or by just one play. Yeah. Sometimes luck ain't on your side when it counts. So totally. Yep. I mean, we talk about that Colts game all the time. I mean, we should have lost Colts the Colts game. game. Yeah. I mean, very. <laughs> we had no business winning that game. We got a very fortunate call in our favor, and we still had a hard time <laughs> scoring the touchdown, but we finally got it and we won. But yeah, it does not always go your way. But the thing with this, you know, we talked all off season. That I think the most frustrating thing for Browns fans, and this goes back to the Watson point that Tony made, is we talked all the time. Like if we just get above average quarterback play from Deshaun Watson, this team's going to win most of its games. Like that's how good we thought this team was. And then we got a super high end game from Watson on Sunday and the rest of the team really didn't show up. So that's a little disheartening, I think for Browns fans, or at least for me just being like, okay, so it's not just, we need good quarterback play out him. Well, we need everybody to get their asses back in check here. I mean, it comes out to like, sure. He played great, but the line didn't No receivers chop balls. Yep. You know what I mean? There's mental errors. Yep. Defense gave up you know, a million missed tackles. You can't play like that. It's the NFL. Like in any given Sunday, we're, we're talking about this game. We're joking around. Now we're the underdog. You know what I mean? And to a team that we were like, chalk it up know, for a win. Down yeah. for a, chalk it up for a win. You know, two, three months ago when the schedule comes out, yeah. we're like, yeah, hey, they got a lot of holes. Well, they don't look like it, you know, heading into this game. But, uh, uh, no, I mean, clean up mental mistakes, clean up, come out with some energy, come out with like, hey, your job in the season is on the line because yeah. basically the season is on the line. I mean, I, I don't want to talk about playoffs or anything like that. I want to just get a win. I agree, man. Uh, one and four would not be very good for playoff chances. So let's get that win. Yeah. Does anybody want to jump up here and chat? We're, we'll probably be running the show for another 10, 15 or so. If anybody wants to jump up here and talk, hands up in the chat. Nobody? Nobody. I'll say something. Oh, Mama I'll Tendo. I'll say something while we're... Oh, my gosh. Hold on. I'm not saying anything. No. Come on up. <laughs> Come on up, Mama Tendo. Can we hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. So I got a couple things. One, Chubb will be in the building again. So that goes back to leadership in the building. So that's hope. But I feel like they've lost that next man up theory, concept, whatever you want to call it. It, it. it seems like, you know, last year it was all about the next man up, the next man up. And everybody stepped up. And this year, I'm not getting that feeling. No, uh, you're not wrong. I, I definitely don't feel that either that next man up mentality just does not seem to be existing right now so that that concerns me but then i have a question okay you guys said that you know things went quiet on mike hall jr there for a while things went real quiet on the deshaun watson thing what are the odds that we start turning this around and then all of the sudden that shit pops back up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's the NFL. That is my fear at the moment. Yeah, it's the NFL. It's the Browns. So I would say the odds aren't small. <laughs> I mean, I think we we talked sure. we joked right. about it in our group text. Uh, I don't know, maybe a couple weeks ago, and it was like kind of the same thing that you said. Like, what what if the Browns come out and they just lay a smack? I don't know if it was the Giants game or whatever. It's like, we we'll lay a smack down the Giants, and then Monday morning we get the the text alert. Oh, uh, he's been suspended or whatever. So you're right. That whole right. thing has gone pretty quiet. And I was just trying to look online and I'm not seeing squat any, you know, anything. So hopefully. Well, I'm, Cause I'm hoping said that something about within the next two weeks. And how long ago was that? Yeah, it's I think been it was two weeks ago. It's been uh, long okay. enough. I believe that the accuser has by now probably spoken with the NFL. So I would 
I would kind of go on the side of no news is good news because if there was That's anything the to to go after him or to put pressure to try to get him to whatever they're trying to get him to pay up or if they want to try to issue a suspension, you, you would have heard something by now, I would imagine. That's what I kind of was thinking, but, you know, it's like I, like you said, we are the Browns. So <laughs> the odds that everything starts going good and then that gets thrown at us just scares the hell out of me. Yeah, if they can kick us in the balls, they usually do it. <laughs> Precisely. Precisely. <laughs> Uh, hypothetical balls, of course, right? <laughs> yeah. You're right, you're right. <laughs> no, but I, I do. I'm, I'm kind of on somebody's the, balls, just not mine. That's right, exactly. No, I'm, I'm more on the no news is good news right now, just because, like I said, I do think that that window has already taken place. I'm, I would imagine that conversation's already been had. The meeting's already taken place because that mm-hmm. was at least probably three and a half weeks ago, wasn't it, Justin? It's been a while. It was like I right after the first game, I, wasn't I'm, it? I. Yeah, I thought that it, it was going to be after that Monday after the Giants game, I thought. Yeah. Maybe, and it might have been even the week before that. You know, I might be getting mixed up on my weeks, but with, I think you guys both said it. If there was something there, I think that you would already seen like, hey, you know, Exemplus is probably coming or, you know, I don't think it would, I, I really don't think that there would just be like, boom, you're you're suspended for you know or you know what i mean or hey you are going on the exempt list and we're gonna investigate this i think if there's anything substantial and i don't know you know what i mean like I, we're we're all guessing here at this point with it but like you said i think no news no news is good news um as far as nick chubb uh that's a huge just huge mo- like motivator i watched a video where he was walking out on the practice field and every browns player was saying hi to him you know, like that is a big, big deal that that dude's even out there practicing considering his career almost was over, you know, a year ago. I, at least I thought I've never watched a game and felt that sick to my stomach. Like I just watched my favorite football player probably have his career taken away from him. So the fact that he's out there, I mean, I'm not, I'm also going to be very like grounded on what we can expect moving forward. I've been telling people they're like, hey, you know, are we going to see Chubb this weekend? I'm like, I wouldn't expect him until the Bengals game. Yeah, I think that they'll wait until we get back home and then, you know, let's let's show out for our guy and, you know, put on a spectacle and, you know, really get this crowd behind this team. But um, I agree. That's a huge and he's not he's not a raw, raw guy. He's a very quiet guy, but he's a guy that leads with action. You know what I mean? He's a guy that leads with his practice, you know, like how he works presence yes yeah it's just very Uh, much a presence absolutely i so i agree with that i think that's going to be huge um but i do think there's something with what you said about you know guys stepping up and stuff like that the big motto was whatever it takes or whatever last year you know and i i right now i don't see that i feel like it's anything that we can do oh it's it's happening you know and that and we're just I don't want to say we're making excuses, but I feel like we're all kind of like just being like, well, maybe this is going on. But it, it does make me nervous that we're seeing a lot of issues across a lot of different position groups. Yeah. <laughs> yep, I agree. Um, well, thanks for your questions and all your good points. Mama yeah, is there anything else you wanted to yeah. say or <laughs> ask before you? Nope, I'm good. Okay. All right. Well, thanks. We <laughs> appreciate it. This episode is brought to you by Manly Bands. Dog Pack, if you followed the show for a while, you know that I recently got married. I got my wedding band at Manly Bands. Now, I opted for something a little more simple. So I just got a plain, simple, gold, polished band from Manly Bands. But that's not everybody. And I'm telling you, they've got so many cool different designs and materials available. They've got stuff. They've got bands made out of Jack Daniels whiskey barrels, meteorites, even dinosaur bones. It's so cool. Just head to manlybands.com. Check out the selection. See what they have. They've even got build your own bands if you want to make a custom style band for yourself. And right now, use promo code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, 
at manlybands.com when you check out and you'll get 25% off your order. 25% is a big deal. So make sure if you guys are, are looking for a new wedding band, uh, Blake mentioned last week or two on the show that, you know, he's lost a lot of weight in the last year. And so his wedding band is a little too big for him. So he's thinking about getting a new one. And I told him, I said, just go to Manly Band, see what they got. And the 25% off your order is such a great deal. You really can't beat it. So at least go check it out, see what they have. They've got some really cool stuff. And again, promo code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, if you decide to buy one and you'll get 25% off of that purchase. If you don't know your ring size, you can order a free ring size guide. They'll ship it straight to you. You can punch out the little rings and put them on your finger to see which size fits you best. And then every single um, band you order comes with a free silicone ring for whenever you want to work out or go swimming or whatever you need a silicone band for, you get one for free shipped with your purchase of a Manly Band from manlybands.com. So check it out. Again, manlybands.com. Use promo code DOGS for 25% off your order. Um, so I just wanted to address this real quick. So in the chat, Gage said, what do we think about the Amari Cooper trade rumors? So after uh, Rasheed Rice went down uh, with that brutal knee injury for the Chiefs last week. There's been obviously trade rumors swirling that the Chiefs are in the market for a, a wide receiver. Amari Cooper could be heading out and all that kind of stuff. And then obviously you got all the, oh, the Browns could be trading for Devontae Adams or, you know, uh, DeAndre Hopkins, whatever. Or, but uh, what did you, what do you think about all that stuff? I don't know, man. You know, like uh, as far as like Amari Cooper, the contract, you know, like, I don't think, like, we're pretty much on the hook for it. So we already paid him. If you do trade him, yeah, if you do, if you do trade him, you're going to get draft compensation or you're going to get a piece back. Right. So if that's, then that's where, like, there needs to be honest conversations in house with coaches, with general manager and stuff like that and sit them down and say, hey, you know, like, is this something that we can, we can fix? Are you happy here? Cause you've been, I know, I know a lot of people are fed up right now, but he has been, everything that we could ask for and more for for two seasons you know what i mean and then it's it's been rough it's absolutely yeah. it's for for a guy that we've depended on it is kind of like yikes what happened you know um as far as like the trade stuff i you know i was very big on if we could make a move for d hop i've watched the uh, play i'm not interested in that um Devontae adams is intriguing you know i I will, if if it takes hey you know maybe a uh, Amari Cooper and a third and a fourth I would send that pick I would send it because you're you're basically getting a guy out a one year rental for both guys so who do you think has more upside Amari Cooper or Devontae Adams um, for me I Devontae Adams if you can talk him into coming in and buying into this team I mean he's about we talk about Amari Cooper elite route runner like. That dude is next. He is above that. You know what I mean? He is legit. Um, I just don't know if he wants to be here in Cleveland. Uh, and I don't want that. I don't want another no. messy situation. I feel like we already got enough bullshit going on right now where we don't need that. I think Adams is a lock for either the Jets with Rodgers or the yeah. Saints with Carr. I don't think he wants to play with anybody other than the two quarterbacks he's already played with. And honestly, sure. I don't think that yep. do the Browns, first of all, you'd have to give up draft compensation and maybe like a player or whatever, you know, pieces to go mm -hmm. get him. And then you've also got to take on his contract, which we've already. So, so if we bring him in and we trade him Murray Cooper, we're like paying double the price to only have sure. one guy. Like it doesn't make a whole lot of sense cap space wise, you know, contractually. So I, I don't think anything's going to happen with, like you said, Hopkins, nah, pass. DeAndre, or yeah. uh, Devontae Adams, not going to happen. Cooper getting traded, I think, if the Browns, if the Browns lose Sunday and say we lose to the Eagles and we're like one and five, I think you're going to see guys move. I think you're going to start to see yep. draft picks coming in. You're going to see a whole different team than what we thought we were going to be having this year. But, you know, we start winning games. We we beat the the commanders. We go to Philly and beat the Eagles. Now all of a sudden we're three and three. It's like okay, maybe now we're buyers. Maybe we're back in this whole, you know, we're back on the right track and everything. So that's the path I hope we go down. But I do think that Amari, among a couple other guys, could be on the on the trade block if things don't go well. 
I 100% agree with you, man, unfortunately. Yeah. I really do. But And also, it just depends on how things shake out. The division very much, a, like, as it's much as we are start. like, yeah, for everybody. Jesus, this is terrible. Everything's still on the table. I don't think Pittsburgh is, like, world beaters. I mean, their schedule is pretty easy the first half. It gets a little tougher on the back end, but so is ours. You know right. what I mean? Ours is equally as brutal. But it all comes down to what happens the next few weeks. I agree. If things, if the wheels kind of start falling off, I do think that, you know, you'll see some of the older guys get traded out. Some of the higher contracts, like that we've talked about in the past, Wyatt Teller, if he, if he gets healthy, I could see them moving him. You know what I mean? Like there's guys that we like that if we start losing, we'll get moved out. Yeah. But I mean, that's a great point about the division. Cause you know, if we're able to pull off two wins in the next two weeks and all we haven't played a single divisional game yet. So we would start our divisional yeah. stretch. You know, we got the Bengals and then I can't remember if it's right after that, it's the Ravens yeah. or whenever, but I know they're coming up. You know, if we can go into divisional games sitting at 500, because who knows where they're going to be? I mean, the Bengals are where, you know, they're one and three like us. The Ravens have struggled a little yeah. bit early on. So you're right. It is wide open. So I, I know it's it hasn't been the most positive, upbeat you know, week or a couple weeks here. And, you know, this whole preview hasn't been probably the, the most positive that we've ever done, but you know, the optimism is still there that all we got to do is yeah. like you said, I think to start this whole thing. And I, it's the main key, just knock off the mental mistakes, the stupid mistakes yeah. that cost us these games. We can start eliminating those. We're going to be okay. We got the talent to win these games yeah. and we can get right back in this thing. So that's for me, that's what I'm really hoping for Sunday. I agree, brother. I agree 100%. All right. Well, we're going to wrap this thing up. Does anybody want to jump on stage real quick at the end here? Any last comments? All right. So Tony wants to pop on up here. So end us with some positivity, Tony. <laughs> so positive is that we're going to go into Washington. I agree with Justin. It's so much as I want to say our defense is going to be elite. I I. I have little faith that they're going to change it within a week. So I, I think it's going to be, it's going to be a dog fight. It's going to be a lot of scoring. I would imagine. I think we finally hit over the 20, uh, 20 point mark, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, but I think that if they can fix one or two of the mental things, we can easily go into Washington and take a win home and have some positivity. Going into it. Um, but the, Two questions I had for you guys is the end of the end of the show is uh, a the keys to the game to go into Washington and win, and then the second one is with all the problems that we had, if there's one problem that we said, listen, this is the one that we absolutely need to fix going into the Washington this week. What is the one problem that we hope to see is fixed going into Washington? Okay, you want to go first, Josh? Let's yeah, sure. So I guess. I Main key to the game for me, I mean, outside of like eliminating mistakes and all that stuff, but I've been saying it, <laughs> this is going to be my third week in a row, harping on this, run the freaking football. They give up 137 yards on the ground average. This is the type of situation where I you got to go in there and start imposing your will on people in the trenches. It starts up front, get physical, and that will help the passing game get going better. I, I'm sick as tired of seeing Deontay Foreman get three two carries in a game and and nothing's happening on the ground and then we're just sputtering out all these freaking drives in between the first one and the last one establish the run for me that is like the big key and then on the other side of the ball stop the run i it, it all goes down to the trenches up front on both sides of the line we got to control that line of scrimmage absolutely um i think if uh if we want to have a chance to win this game uh, like I said, it's going to be a shootout. I think you're going to have to make Jaden Daniels fire and make some mistakes. And we haven't seen him do that really at all. Is he leading so the league in completion if, percentage? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we got to try to at least make him look normal, like a normal quarterback. If he goes out there and he throws for 302 touchdowns, then he rushes another one in. He's got 70 yards. We're in big trouble. Other thing, my biggest thing that you have to address this week is also the offensive line play. Yep. If, I, if there's another game, if I have to watch another game where two or three guys 
come through free off release with nobody touching them. I don't know if I can mentally sit through a Browns game and watch that <laughs> because it is by far the most frustrating thing. I am not athletic. Uh, me and Josh joke around. Do you think we could at least try to put a hand on somebody? And it's just, it's so frustrating. And then, you know, afterwards I have to listen to people be like, well, Joe, well, Sean Watson sucks. And I'm like, oh my God, uh, maybe there's been moments, but you can't watch that game last week and go, yeah, Sean Watson sucks. Like, yep. and that is just we have to there has to be some type of grit on the offensive line we have to just hold Pat can the ball come out quicker absolutely but we can't just let people we can't let three guys free release on our quarterback as soon as he can't even get his drop no he's literally taking a, like a one two foot drop and running for his life address the offensive line address it it has to be fixed Absolutely. That was going to be it's, Yeah. That was going to be brother. mine. I was going to exactly say what you said. Yep. Put freaking hands on somebody on that offensive line. I don't you don't have, it doesn't have to be a great block. Just at least get in their freaking way. And, alter, and this alter, free release alter stuff. Alter their is, path to the quarterback. Yes, please. Slightly. Oh, it's so frustrating. I'm with you 100% on that. And I guess since you took that one, I'll just say for me the thing that needs fixed, tackle. Just tackle on defense. We yeah. we're getting to the ball. That's the thing. Like, we're there. We're just not executing. We're just not completing the tackle. Sure. So, I'm tired of seeing shoulders getting thrown into the guy's ankles. Like, that's just not going to get it done, especially against Brian Robinson, who's a big, strong yeah. running back. And even if he's out, I mean, Austin Eckler is a great running back. It's going to be tough sure. if you're not going to try to wrap these guys. So, definitely tackling for me. Yeah, that's good. All right, guys. Well, we appreciate everybody hanging in here with us tonight on a uh, Dog Pack Discord show. Um, tuning in again for another preview. Browns get the commanders in Washington on Sunday. Hopefully we get that second win of the season, get back on the right track and get this train moving the way it's supposed to be moving. So again, if you guys want to join into these dog pack discourse shows in the future, just head to join the dogs.com, become an official dog pack member on the Patreon page, get synced up with the private discord, jump in here, meet all these guys, have a ton of fun. You get to talk to mama Tendo and fatal gnome and all these Tony, the Italian, these guys are in here all the time chatting. I mean, Andrew Jackson wasn't in here tonight, but we got Gage in here. We've got uh, True Senpai, Mr. Brad Moneymaker, who's always leaving his voicemails. Kenny Max in there. Like, it's just a ton of fun. So join the dogs.com. Get in with this awesome community of people and start having some fun. So we will wrap this thing up and uh, appreciate everybody just hanging with me with my voice. And uh, oh, yeah, I, we didn't even mention Blake, but Blake obviously not in here tonight, just got back from Vegas today day is that right Uh, i think so i i know i was texting him uh yesterday morning um very early in the morning we're talking four or five in the morning and he was lost in vegas with john i was like jesus these guys might not make it home oh Oh, boy well so everybody just uh, just, you know you know but they made it because i got more text (laughs) messages later so that's good so best wishes to blake on a speedy recovery over the weekend we'll get him back in studio on monday we'll have the whole crew back together at least that's the plan as long as i'm not still sweating bullets and sick off my ass but that's not my plan so we'll see how it goes but again thanks to everybody tuning in and until we see you guys on hopefully a victory monday let's go brownies let's go browns baby Go Tribe! Go Tribe, yeah. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at The Dogs Podcast. Get your thoughts on the show at thedogspodcast.com. This episode is brought to you by Danger Coffee. Browns fans, we talk about how Danger Coffee is made free from mold toxins that are in 45% of the world's coffee, but that's not all that Danger Coffee has to offer. Mineral and nutrient deficiencies are a big deal. They make you feel sick, tired, stressed, and they can give you brain fog. These deficiencies negatively affect your immune system, your digestion, sleep, metabolism. Have you ever wondered why you get an initial burst from your coffee? 
but then you get that little crash not long after. Danger Coffee's patent pending process remineralizes your body with more than 50 trace minerals and electrolytes, leaving you more energized, engaged, powerful. These micronutrients enter the cells to boost performance. They bind to toxins to provide detoxification support. I know that sounds like a lot, but the bottom line, guys, is minerals matter. And most of us really don't get enough of them on a daily basis. Danger Coffee delivers micronutrients, plus it gives you access to the minerals you already have. Head to DangerCoffee.com. Use our code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, for 10% off your order. And that code can be used over and over. So you get 10% off every order you make using code DOGS. It's time to start every day off with a cup of coffee that gets you going and actually keeps you going. DangerCoffee.com. Code dogs.